Okay, now that this is dried, you can see the nice little bit of uh, lighting differential that I have just by doing the dabbing method on the inside of the window. And you can see how nicely this looks as a almost finished product. Widen back out. How nice this looks as an almost finished product. Um, we still have uh, a couple of steps to go. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and call this one uh, finished uh, prior to sealing. Now, um, the window me method that I did uh, is something I would do for a more medieval building or something in a battlefield uh, situation. If you're going to do something for a newer look and you want to do the highlights in it, you can. I'm just choosing not to for this because I want this to be kind of low-key. Um, these are nice looking uh, huts, but the objective of this is not to make something that completely just blows everything else on the tabletop away. It's actually to have something to have your figures and stuff around uh, to add to the, the general feel. Now I'm going to go ahead and seal these and I'll be back for the next step. Uh, keep in mind I have not... See, this one doesn't have any... Okay, here works one. Keep in mind that I have not yet taken and covered up some of the issues like this uh, blue that's on it. And I am very conscious of that. Um, some of these have a little bit more than others. But I'm not, I have not taken care of this yet and I'm aware of that. I'm just at a stage where I'm going to go ahead and let these dry and then uh, go on to the, the uh, step where we do take care of that. I'll be back in just a bit. Bye. Okay, so we're back and I've double sealed each of these with a layer of Krylon uh, clear coat and then a layer of Tester's dull coat uh, lacquer. So unfortunately I could not find my clump foliage. Apparently it's gotten displaced and I don't have time to go out and get another one because that's going to mean a lot of driving and it's fairly hot outside right now. And my car's air conditioning doesn't work, so we're going to use the next best thing. I have some of this artificial turf that you can uh, buy from any of the railroad shops or even hobby places like Hobby Lobby. Essentially it's clump foliage, but it's really, really fine. And a lot of people use it as, a, uh, <clears throat> as an alternative to like grass and stuff when they're doing hills. So what we're going to do with this is, I have a fairly fine detail brush um, I got from one of those disposable brush packs. I've got some watered down glue. As you can see I've got some blue here that needs to be covered up. So the reason I'm using watered down glue on a detail brush is because I want to do some fairly fine lines. And using a nozzle, a, a uh, glue nozzle, will not really work out on this very well. Now you don't want to water your glue down too much. You want it so that you can still um, see the the glue on it. You don't want it to be pure water. Um, but kind of like a super thin gravy. And the reason for this is twofold. First off, you don't want it to dry out while you're doing this. And second off, you want it to be thin enough that it will, uh, still absorb into the uh, turf. Sorry, let me widen this out a bit. We're not going to do this on every one of our houses. Take 
pair of tweezers. I'm not really a fan of this stuff, but it will do what I need it to do. And apparently our glue is a little thinner than I would like. But because this stuff is going to absorb into it, Just add a little bit more. Um, because this stuff is so thin, if you put your glue on too thick and not watered out enough, it's going to uh, leave a very heavy raised surface. Which is going to look kind of clumpy and not in a good way. Put a movie up for you. Oh, you <clears throat> Using this fairly watered down, you can uh, paint it on just where you want it. Okay, so I'm going to go back and do this where I need to on the other buildings, and I'll get back in touch with you guys shortly. And we are back again. Okay, so, a little admission, uh, this video is taking quite a bit of uh, time and effort because I'm doing so many houses and there's so many steps in each one. So in the last step, I had forgotten to go ahead and dry brush some of the rocks with gray, so I've gone ahead and gone back and done that. Uh, finished up with the green edging with the uh, moss. Um, I don't really, I didn't really like this stuff before, but after using so much of it on these and seeing how it breaks up the coloration uh, for the effect of all of them together, I really am starting to like this a little bit more. So now we're on to the next step. Now, <clears throat> one of the, this has been a very uh, informative video for me as far as learning what I needed to work on for planning, um, to do longer videos, to do more involved videos. So one of the things that I'd come across earlier on was that when I cut all the sticks, I did cut them all to the same length, um, but I had so many stacks of sticks that I was cutting that a couple of the stacks got mixed up. So in this particular house, let me zoom in. You can 
sort of see that this uh, take an exacto knife blade this plank is a little bit short now I went ahead and put the short end at the bottom and let me go ahead and show you you can kind of stick the, the knife under the plank and I put the short edge at the bottom for a reason um, anything that you do wrong with these can be covered up with a little bit of uh, help. So we're at the final stage on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add some uh, static grass in. Now a lot of people, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know what static grass is. It's this uh, fine, I'm not even sure what this is made out of, I'm guessing it's like nylon or something. But essentially you put glue down and then you add it to the base. Let it dry and it comes up as grass. Um, I've seen people using static grass applicators. I've never seen a need for them. Um, I've seen people adding glue to seal the static grass onto something. It's not necessary on these because the bases on these are so small around them. These are acting more as a guard against anyone bumping stuff into the house than anything else. They're not big enough so people aren't really going to be putting miniatures onto these. So sealing the static grass down won't really be necessary. Now, um, most people are going to be aware of the green static grass that you can get the really bright green stuff that most people have seen when it first came out. Um, it comes in brighter shades of green which you can get from model railroading sites on eBay and such. I prefer to use dead grass because then it's not as uh, season specific. Even with this here, it could still be a cold environment but uh, because not every plant necessarily dies off and goes brown during the, the colder times. Um, having dead grass makes it a little easier to blend it in with any environment that you're going to do for like a war zone or something. Now, as far as the static grass goes, this is a little tin that I got from Gale Force 9. It is dead static grass. Now, it's uh, a really nice color, but the thing that, that uh, kind of bothers me with it is it's not really... if, if you've had a yard during the winter especially, you don't have this as your grass color. You have this as your grass color. Now, this is one that I got from Games Workshop. I'm not sure if they still... I don't, I don't remember how long ago I bought this. Um, so I'm not sure if this one is still sold in this size. Um, and different manufacturers will produce this stuff for different amounts of time, so they may uh, have... some other companies may have come up with this color I use a mix of them, and that's because I remember that there were there was always a mixture of colors. It wasn't necessarily just one set of uh, colored. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I have a bottle of glue. Actually, I should have several bottles of glue. This one is slightly watered down, and by slightly watered down, I mean that I added in maybe an ounce and a half of water to this bottle. Um, it didn't fill it up all the way, so I think the bottle was about that full. I added an ounce and a half, or about an ounce maybe an ounce and a half, and it came up to about there. Um, I shook it up real good. I just wanted the water to loosen the glue up just a little bit so that it'll stay wet a little longer. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and apply it at places around the base. Now the first place I'm going to do is here at that corner where I had the beams that don't quite go all the way down. I'm going to apply this patchily. I don't want to apply it everywhere on the base. I just want to do this in patches. You want your patches to be kind of randomly shaped. Okay, let me wipe off the nozzle on this.
Okay, now I've got two different types of tweezers. I'm using these ones for the dead static grass, the really dead static grass. I'm using these ones for the less dead. Now, the reason I'm doing that is, let me put this on here so you can see a little better. I'm going to take the dead static grass and I'm just going to drop tiny little piles. I'm not covering the entire glue dot with them. I'm just dropping little chunks. And the reason I'm doing this is because the if if I just add in uh, more of this to here, it's just going to come out as a uniform color. So I want to have actual blotches of this yellow static grass so that it stands out a little better. I'm trying just to drop tiny little chunks. So you can see there's still plenty of glue. It's not covered. go ahead and shake any of this off yet. I want to do this all in one step because if you add more glue in after this grass is dried, it's not really going to uh, look very nice. So I want to do this all in one step. I'm going to take these bigger tweezers and just cover the grass tuft completely. Or the, the glue dot completely. Now what this is going to do is anywhere where the yellow dead grass wasn't covering it, this will go ahead and cover up the rest of that dot. Now anyone that's used static grass, you know you're going to do this on some sort of mat so that you can pour the rest of your unused static grass back into the uh, little tub you keep it in. Now, this tub that I have right here that I'm taking it out of is my dead grass tub. And the reason I'm doing it this way should really let this dry the way it is with the, the tufts on it unmolested but I'm not going to worry about that right now because I just want to get this out of the way set this off to the side. Right now you're not going to really be able to see any of the variation because of the white underneath it. But essentially I've got this little one of the Gale Force 9 dead winter grass. What I use for my dead grass tub is actually this one. Now this started out as this. But as I do this, I end up with more and more of the yellow grass in there. So I just dump it back into here. It's not really going to hurt anything. 
there's enough green in here that it diffuses nicely. see this is lighter than this because I've used this so many times that it's got more of the yellow in it so that's why I'm keeping them separate let me go ahead and put this off to the side and cap this because the last thing you want to do is spill any games workshop product because let's face it they charge an arm and a leg for anything okay so put these off to the side to dry and I'll be back in just a little bit show you one of the ones that's a little finished up welcome back guys it's gonna be a little noisy because right now I'm at my favorite local game store um, they're going to go ahead and buy these from me I haven't negotiated a price yet because I just got here but I needed a big enough area with enough green to be able to spread them out so you could see them so this is what we got some of them you can see here how doing the yellow and the green uh, for the static grass really helps out so you get a nicer variety instead of just the like one kind of standard bland color But this is what we got. Um, I already spoke to the game store manager. He's going to go ahead and buy these from me. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is my favorite local game store that I go to to play at. So by selling these, it's a win-win-win because I'm going to get money for making them. And when I want to play with them, because they're buying them for their personal store uh, terrain pile. So because I made them as sturdy as I did, when I want to come in and I need to use them to play with, they'll be here. So I can play with these and get money for them. So that's just something to think about when you're uh, making your stuff. If you can find a favorite local game store to make an arrangement like that with, then it really helps you get extra money for your crafting. Um, and still have something to play with. Uh, the next video that we'll be doing in this series on building a village is going to show you some taller structures and I hope you guys like this. If you uh, like what you saw let me know in the comments. If you don't like what you saw let me know. Uh, this video is actually being put up after a lot longer than what it should have taken to make simply because I've been so busy and uh, kind of crippled by work that I couldn't get all the steps done on this um, as quickly as I would have liked. So this has been a huge learning video for me, learning all the things that I needed to work on for organizing and some of the stuff that I needed to work on for uh, planning and preparation. And I hope you guys like what you're seeing. Uh, the next series of videos should be a lot better as time goes on. If you have any suggestions for me, let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.